over to you sir thank you sir at the outset uh, let me thank rotary club atashri and in particular shri raja for making me share some of the observations on yoga to motivate all of us to practice yoga let me make a declaration that i am not a yogi i am only a researcher in the field of yoga though i practice yoga but i can't claim the authority that several of the yoga gurus have in this field of yoga in fact they started popularizing yoga but whereas i am just researching on yoga nonetheless my humble submission to all the audience is the attempt in this maybe 20 25 minutes i don't know how long i given time to speak uh, maybe i would not take more than 25 to 30 minutes and let some questions be available for you to ask uh to impress upon you what is the science behind yoga uh in some areas if not in all areas mental health in particular even in mental health a small part of the mental health where science uh, we have been able to demonstrate there are many other areas in mental health and in health itself uh, yoga has been extensively researched today and you, we have a lot of data but i am just showing one facet of it to bring it to your attention so uh, i will be using some slides uh, during my presentation uh, hopefully that should be possible one second mr raja yeah uh, you uh, you need to make dr ganga other a co-host okay dr, uh, dr. ganga then now you can share screen yes sir thank you uh hopefully you are seeing some slides on the screen uh, not yet uh, have you shared screen sir uh, let me see why it did not uh i want to slide share does it work now uh, yes yeah yes perfect thank you yeah there it is okay <clears throat> yoga has come to stay with all of us in our day to day life as a lifestyle measure thanks to the honorable prime minister who alluded to yoga in his first talk uh, in the united nations meeting uh, where yoga got uh, a place and in fact they it is said that it was one of the resolutions which was passed with the highest number of votaries and also with the shortest time from the time the move was made and the uh, resolution became uh, accepted uh, and from 21st uh, june of 2015 international day of yoga has been announced and we have been practicing yoga uh the one of the corner pictures is the first yoga day meeting which uh, was uh, chaired by the honorable pm and in the rajpath in new delhi close to over 50000 people have practiced yoga together and of course all countries practiced yoga in some or other forum uh, at the same time of the day 7 o'clock uh, and that is going on year after year and we recently also held it the sixth uh, years uh, celebrations although in a uh, home bound manner because of the covid we couldn't come in masses like this on the streets or fields to do yoga yoga has now become a very popular event world over and uh, it has brought people together and in fact yoga is said to be something that unites samyoga yoga ityukto jeevatma paramatmana yoga connects my personal consciousness to that cosmic consciousness if practiced well that transcendence uh, is what we see in one or other form today it can connect 
my personal consciousness to the cosmic consciousness surely it will connect my personal consciousness the neighboring consciousness and we start coming together and together on the same platform like this happens in this june 21st when large people come to the streets the fields to do mass yoga drill the yoga has actually connected people connected nations connected communities uh, connected all age groups and people have been practicing yoga and in fact uh, this connectedness is uh, a message which i got uh, from a teenager this was about uh, close to 10 years ago a teenager engineering student a daughter of one of my classmate uh, happened to talk to me i made a visit to their house and i saw photographs of shri shri ravi shankar sadguru baba ramdev very yoga postures on the living room i wondered uh, when did my friend uh, turn to yogi activity and i asked him what happened he said my daughter is uh, deeply into yoga and she has put this so the daughter 19 years engineering student uh, teenager how can she be attracted to yoga uh, teenagers are attracted to a lot more things today by yoga and then she came out of the room where she was studying and said no uncle i have been very keenly following yoga you know yoga i am practicing and so on so I asked her can you tell me one experience that made you get attracted to yoga and she said very interestingly uh, i feel connected connected means what now i feel connected with my family members i feel connected with my yoga mates who are doing yoga along with me in that yoga school i feel connected with my classmates when i come out i feel connected with all my neighbors all the people i see around i'm not alone you know it gives me that confidence i feel a feeling of well being that i have people with me vasudeva kutumbakam the whole world is connected oh i thought for a while this was uh, either a baba ramdev or shri shri ravi shankar speaking no it was a teenager from then on i also got attracted to this connectedness and we have done some research on this neurobiology of connectedness and yoga although i'm not alluding to that here the fact remains that uh, a feeling of uh, well being is something that yoga generates and so people have been practicing and it has become very popular and yoga also has kindled interest in researchers and uh, more and more people are conducting research today and exponentially the numbers of research articles uh, in scientific journals on yoga have been increasing in the last 20 years and of course we too have contributed to little close to about 100 scientific publications from the man alone ever since we started the yoga research uh, in clinical population about 10 to 12 years ago so yoga has attracted public attracted uh, researchers and yoga has been growing and today what i will be speaking to you is a very brief uh, uh, evidence uh, support uh, from the angle which i have studied uh, as i told in the beginning i am not a yogi i am not an authority on yoga i cannot uh, bring in that authoritative experience of mine to tell others you do practice yoga but what i can do is i can bring in the evidence that is required for a scientist to be advocating yoga or a doctor to be advocating yoga to his patients or the public so there is a small facet of yoga evidence research that we have been able to demonstrate there are many other things others have demonstrated and we have also demonstrated many other evidences for yoga but suffice to say that i will take a small facet of it to illustrate in front of you how yoga can be helpful to an individual to feel well get over his depression or her depression and what is the neuroscience behind its function as a uh, anti stress or anti depressive intervention into uh, individuals so here i am neuroscience of yoga some evidence for motivating us to practice yoga why why did it attract mental health professionals in fact more research has come in yoga by people from mental health professionals than from other physicians though uh, ever since yoga uh, was introduced into the public uh, in general yoga and uh, mental health have been an inseparable ingredients and in fact yoga vasishta the very first uh, uh, document in ramayana where yoga has been alluded to says manah prashamano payah iti yoga 
what makes my mind uh, very peaceful and strong is yoga and the same thing yoga acharya krishna also says samatvam yoga uchyate as you know yoga acharya krishna is the first one uh, whom we can recognize as a formal uh, psychotherapist a person who counseled uh, arjuna in the battlefield and made him go back to the warring field uh, samatvam yoga uchyate there are many other uh, yoga uh, issues that are talked about in the entire bhagavad gita suffice to say that one of these quotes is this is very popular to me because we use it in our nimhans logo equanimity is yoga and more recently uh, patanjali the sage who introduced yoga to the public as a good manual of ashtanga yoga uh, who also says in his very second uh, aphorism yoga chitta vritti nirodha what helps in reducing the oscillations of my mind is yoga so yoga and mind or mental health is something that has remained uh, inseparable and we know that mind is the seat of uh, all stress or relief so if my mind is very stressed and i can translate that into uh, other bodily parts and get myself becoming ill so the mind is the source of adhi adhi is uh, the one where uh, mental distress is uh, the root cause the adhi ja vyadhi this adhi when it goes on can lead to vyadhi many of the lifestyle disorders have a root cause from adhi the mind being unstable mind being disturbed leads to many bodily symptoms at some point of time and of course it can also lead to mental illness although that classification of mental illness and physical illness has not been so well made in this slide but nevertheless mind being peaceful has a good chance of being keeping me away from that vyadhi and so disturbed mind has been the root cause of the disease and so charaka samhita and many other yoga texts also say that the vyadhi the roots are in that adhi adhi is the mind which can potentially become disturbed to lead to that vyadhi and so uh, the common stress related uh, uh, disorders in uh, uh, day to day living originate from this adhi which is supposed to be linked to this manomaya kosha of the panchakosha theory of yoga uh, diagnosis so the manas which is disturbed can lead to uh, various implications on the body and then it can go on to weaken my other koshas leading to in entirely to become a person uh, ill both physically or mentally so even in uh, gita the lord says it is the mind which eventually moves on to make my body quite deranged he says uh, uh, the desire the vishayan which is what is what they call as desire uh, for which we get attached uh, infatuated and then we go on to uh, develop uh, kama the infatuation great uh, need for the desire uh, to be achieved and when i don't get it i become angry and then i become disturbed i lose my mental state and mental illness and the mental illness would finally lead to uh, pranashya uh, this thing is a very good shloka in the bhagavad gita which says how a disturbed uh, mind state which can be generated because of my uh, poor handling of my own mind and which could eventually in a stage by stage take me to a lowest uh, nadir of my life so uh yoga as i mentioned somebody said it gets feels me connected a lot of people say that i feel very balanced i feel very calm my sleep is better i am not very angry i am able to concentrate better i'm sure if you google what are all the benefits of yoga you have many of these things stated connectedness feeling relaxed feeling calm uh, able to live without sleepless nights eat better these are all the top 10 benefits of yoga which people have talked about i'm sure you two would have read this here and there 
But what I want to demonstrate is, would it simply correct the mind or would yoga also bring about <coughs> various pathobiological effects, correcting them uh, in the process? And so <coughs> the net result is, does it bring a cure? Although the word cure may appear very radical, I just want to demonstrate that in one condition like depression, the pathobiology of depression, how yoga corrects. <coughs> the same issue can get uh, repeated in other conditions, ill, mentally ill or not, physically ill or not, or uh, overall well-being, all these process changes that happen because of yoga could be related. So here I am to uh, take the example of depression. Uh, depression because it's one of the common conditions which you may all encounter day in and day out. People keep showing suicide, depression in celebrities and uh, why depression cannot be controlled. And some of the celebrities who are affected with depression, how they fought and how they became victorious. Depression is a popular uh, discussion that happens in media and in various other forums. So we thought of examining yoga in uh, depression and its biology. This is what I'm going to illustrate to bring in uh, the evidences that we have been able to garner. I'm not requesting, I'm, I'm also not uh, making a theoretical lecture to you or very scientific and technical lecture to you, but just some illustrations in the researchers that have shown the yoga effects in the neurobiology of yoga. Uh, depression, uh, uh, there is what is called as a meta-analysis. People uh, look at all depression studies with yoga and uh, how the other comparator was there. And in this slide, you can see the black dot is to the uh, left of the midline and uh, left of the line, which means that uh, yoga is better, better than usual treatment, better than exercise, better than maybe even uh, relaxation exercise is what they're giving. So yoga in effect is helpful in relieving depression. I'm not going into the review of yoga in depression. There are so many studies. We also did a study which is not a strictly comparison study, although there is a graph comparing drug, uh, drug with yoga and yoga alone. Uh, the graph shows that the yoga people achieved lowest depression scores over the course of their treatment and compared to the drug alone group. But I want you to be cautious in interpreting this slide. Yoga gets uh, depression uh, scores reduced remarkably. And I don't want you to compare it with the drugs in this slide because this is not a randomized clinical trial as in science says. But suffice to say, yoga practicing depressive individuals lose their scores on depression. Now we will go to the uh, various biological processes that yoga will uh, probably contribute to in making these people better. For example, in depressed individuals, it is shown that deeper structures of the brain uh, are actually more active and in the process, the outer structures of the brain become less active. So whether which one is the cause or which one is the effect is not something, a discussion point right now. The deeper structures become very active leading uh, in turn to the outer structures of the gray matter become uh, less active. And this has been associated with many people with depression, particularly so those who have had a chronic depression. So it is said that there is a biological basis for generating depression. And so what can we do? Uh, one of the uh, deeper structures of the brain is the limbic system. Uh, the yellow spots, what we are seeing in the uh, left side in the screen, uh, the, in the brain scan, are the points where the individuals will be hyperactive when there is a depression. And uh, this is a study where we made people chant OM, and when the brain images were recorded in a very sophisticated procedure called as functional magnetic resonance imaging. Uh, when OM is chanted, the yellow spots indicate that the brain became hypoactive or deactivated. So in other words, uh, one of the components of yoga practice, chanting OM, 
can actually deactivate some of the centers which potentially can lead to depression if they were hyperactive, if they were increasingly active. Although this is not a data from patients of depression, but we have some indirect evidence that this could well be happening in depressives for practicing yoga and no yoga practice is uh, free from at least one session of chanting Om for maybe five minutes or three minutes. There could be other procedures of yoga which could also be bringing the same effect, although we have not still investigated to that effect or for that matter anyone else has investigated it either. The deactivation of the uh, deeper limbic structures can actually make the individual produce more neurotransmitter called as gamma aminobutyric acid. This neurotransmitter actually inhibits the rest of the brain overall so that I am not uh, highly active. I am not thrown out of balance with uh, so many thoughts, so many uh, emotions, so many concerns uh, pervading my mind and brain. So this gamma amino butyric acid in depression is lower whether in men or women compared to healthy subjects who are otherwise are not predisposed to this distress or uh, depression. So this is well demonstrated and we looked at whether the GABA levels are changed following yoga practice. In fact, one of the uh, uh, researchers in New York has been able to demonstrate this in depressed individuals. Uh, the levels of the GABA, gamma amino butyric acid, in live subjects can be measured today thanks to the technology that has been introduced, what is called as magnetic resonance spectroscopy. As you can see there, uh, the GABA levels are indicated by a peak uh, which has been uh, recorded before and after yoga in people who have been diagnosed as depression and yoga has been prescribed in them. So before the signal was slightly shorter, with the post-treatment with yoga, the signal indicating that the GABA activity or the GABA itself rose in the brain in these individuals. We did not try this method, but we used a very sensitive neurophysiological uh, test, what is called as uh, a cortical silent period, CSP we call it. An individual who keeps his uh, hand uh, fisted and we record the muscle potentials from his thumb, uh, when the muscle potential will be very high and will be uh, shown as those spikes on the left side of the uh, graph here. And you actually stimulate the brain by putting a small uh, cortical stimulation, transcranial uh, cortical stimulation by a magnetic pulse, which actually makes this muscle, which we already kept it tight, fisted, and it actually throws one more spike in the muscle. The muscle potentials uh, suddenly have a burst of potential. After that, for some time to come, the muscle becomes very silent. This is because in the brain there is an activity related to GABA which makes the muscle refractory to any other activity for some time to come and anywhere between uh, 100 to 200 milliseconds the electrical activity in my thumb becomes flat and this is called as the cortical uh, inhibitory uh, cortical silent period and this is about uh, before and after yoga we were able to examine them. In, uh, before yoga, it was anywhere uh, up to about 50 to 60 milliseconds and uh, following yoga, it went to almost 110 seconds of uh, cortical silent period, indicating in healthy individuals, yoga actually increased the length of the cortical silent period, uh, which is a indirect measure of increasing of GABA that the yoga has produced. And we looked at individuals of depression. In depression, as you can see here, the pink uh, graph bar on the left extreme, compared to healthy subjects on the other extreme, these people had a very short uh, electro, uh, the cortical silent period. And in this group of depressives, we distributed them into those who practiced yoga and those who practiced merely a walking as an uh, intervention. Uh, the two light and the dark green bars are those who were did only walking. The cortical silent period did not greatly increase in these two groups, before and after, in this group. Whereas in the group of yoga, 
um, before to after the cortical silent period lengthened. And very recently, we have repeated this experiment in a totally different population of a little more severely depressed individuals and who received longer periods of yoga therapy. And in them too, we were able to demonstrate that this cortical silent period, which is a reflection of the GABA tone in the brain, gets longer following practice of yoga. And yoga and exercise brought down the depression levels. But I want to make a comment here or a statement. Yoga not only brought down the depression scores, but also corrected the underlying pathophysiological mechanisms into this depression by enhancing the GABAergic activity, which we did not see in the group which practiced uh, uh, exercise. So we recently published this as well in a very important journal. So an individual is depressed, distressed, and he is quite hyperactivated because the GABA is less in the brain. And in this individual, we know that the levels of cortisol increases. Cortisol is known to be a stress hormone, and in depression, the levels of cortisol are higher uh, than in individuals who did not uh, have depression. And we gave yoga to individuals who were depressed, and we treated them. And we also gave them either medicines alone or medicines with yoga. And you give yoga, more individuals actually lost the levels of cortisol. The high levels of cortisol became lower in more subjects, um, uh, close to about half the subjects lost the levels of uh, cortisol compared to uh, medicines alone. Although I don't want to do a comparative study, this is not a randomized trial, but suffice to say, two thirds of patients who had depression actually lost the levels of cortisol in their brain. And the levels of cortisol coming down has many other benefits. I will be coming to that little later. But in individuals who have been continuously depressed and stressed, brain repair mechanisms actually suffer. And in these people, the brain repairing material called as the brain derived neurotropic factor is actually lower in depressed individuals compared to individuals who have come out of depression or in those who don't have depression, uh, healthy subjects. So individuals with depression have low levels of brain derived neurotrophic factor. The, uh, the detailed explanation for this graph uh, is quite statistical, but the take home message is in depressed, the brain derived neurotrophic factor, which helps to repair my brain from time to time, from day to day with wear and tear, the levels of this brain derived neurotrophic factor is lower in depression than compared to healthy subjects. And for that matter, a depressed having been treated, actually gets this brain derived neurotrophic factors higher. Here is a uh, graph which shows the two blue graphs on the left column uh, is uh, patients with depression and healthy subjects. Depression people had lower levels of the brain derived neurotrophic factor. You treat them and their levels of brain derived neurotrophic factors start increasing, inching towards the healthy subjects values. And you give yoga, in fact yoga pushes this quite more robustly. This is a, uh, on the left column, the group is yoga or no yoga or medicines alone, whatever. There's a large heterogeneous group of people whom we treated and they got better. In them, depression getting better, BDNF actually rose. Treatment with yoga alone gives this benefit as well or even better. This is the message in this uh, slide. Yoga actually produces brain repair mechanism by increasing the brain derived neurotrophic factor better. In fact, this uh, the improvement in the brain derived neurotrophic factor did not happen if these people did not get better with depression or the people continue to remain quite stressed. As you can see, that red line is the pre to post change in the brain derived neurotrophic factor. It did not change. In fact, it got even lower. This is the group of people where the cortisol levels did not drop following yoga. Whereas in the other group where the cortisol levels dropped, their levels of brain derived neurotrophic factor actually increased. This is very interesting to say, uh, to, uh, I want you to note that uh, continued brain repair mechanism having halted, the gray matter in the brain starts shrinking. And this is a scan of uh, depressed subjects, the red 
places or the places where they had lesser particle gray matter compared to healthy subjects and this indicates uh, one of the uh, popular uh, subhashta shloka which says chita dahati nirjeevam chinta dahati jeevana uh, i am on a fire while i am alive if i am continue to remain depressed or i still keep losing my own self so chita dahati nirjeevam chinta dahati jeevana so depressed individuals fail to repair their own selves and then they start losing some important uh, places in the body brain is an example and you do yoga the brain repair mechanism actually gets better i said the bdnf levels get better in depressed individuals and even in healthy individuals the repair mechanism indirectly gets better these are the scans which are a subtraction of the pre and a 6 month later post scans and the yellow spot that i have shown here which i have circled to draw your attention to there is a small yellow speck this is a place what we call as the hippocampus gray matter this hippocampal gray matter actually uh, in this is the group of elderly subjects seven senior citizens average age of them was 70 years they practiced yoga for a period of 6 months they were lucky enough that they were obliged to get the scan done before and after today we have very sophisticated algorithms we can look at the difference uh, in the two scans and estimate how much of uh, gray matter has increased or has been lost and we measured in hippocampus because that is the place where the first loss of gray matter will happen with age or with any other illness so that is the most sensitive area of our brain we start decaying with when we are aged and there is also an area where memory is stored so uh, hippocampal protection happened following a 6 month of practice of yoga in elderly subjects yes the sample size was very small elsewhere somebody has also demonstrated that with uh, age all of us have a smaller gray matter uh, that interrupted line slope shows uh, healthy subjects but they were not practicing yoga age related drop in the levels of particle gray matter happens but if the same examination was made in uh, yoga practitioners who had been practicing yoga for decades in them that age dependent drop in the particle gray matter did not happen so in other words there is some indirect evidence to say that in these yoga practitioners there was some protection to a decaying of the brain from practice of yoga so here we are the neuroscience of depression which is what i have used to demonstrate the neuroscience of yoga uh, we have in depression uh, increased uh, activity of some of the deeper structures of my brain which leads to decrease of the gaba gamma amino butyric acid and this in turn is related to increased levels of the stress hormone cortisol which we have some data to show has an inverse relationship to brain derived neurotrophic factor or the repair mechanisms the repairing mechanisms lead to uh, cortical thinning and this in turn leads to the decreased frontal activity which leads to the increases of the deeper structures a vicious cycle goes on and on and on and you practice yoga at all these sites there is some intervention that yoga makes to make the individual shift from a diseased state to a well state so here we have some evidence for yoga making us actually feel better mentally and that's the reason why i am advocating that all of us should practice yoga so that we are mentally strong and we also become more resilient we are less susceptible to stress and because we are less susceptible to stress stress induced other uh, what we call as uh, non communicable diseases can also be mitigated by practice of yoga although all these things are i am generalizing from some observations uh, but suffice to say that uh, if the yoga charyas or modern yoga gurus shishi ravi shankar or uh, sadguru or baba ramdev and the host of them can speak from the authority of their practice of yoga 
and their knowledge of yoga. Whereas I don't have that authority to be advocating yoga, but the research data, what I have been able to generate, has been able to uh, let all of us talk about yoga and that mana prashamano payaha iti yoga, what makes my mind strong and free from uh, illnesses, and gives me peace is yoga, what has been said uh, five millennia ago. We seem to have found some uh, support in our scientific tools. And this work, what I have shared with you, has been a summated work of many investigators, many researchers who have worked with me in this area, in our yoga center. And uh, yoga center has also been uh, providing free yoga sessions during the COVID period. Uh, these are the timings, 7 a.m. and 4.30 p.m. This slide, you can take a snap and keep it with you. Uh, these are the uh, meeting, uh, Zoom meeting uh, login IDs. You can log in at the tower and you can also practice yoga, uh, uh, which is a live teaching. It is not a video thing that has been put at these two hours. It's a live teaching by very senior yoga teachers who are with us. Both of them have been technically trained with masters and even PhD degree in yoga. One of them is even a medical doctor. He can come on some of the days. But these are the uh, addresses which those of you who want to use it can take a snapshot and then keep it and then log on for the yoga sessions. And we, of course, have uh, put many of the YouTube uh, material uh, on, the, on the YouTube for yoga in the period of uh, um, COVID to build more resilience and more distressing uh, experience for themselves. And in fact, what we have been doing with this tele yoga services, we also have had done some impact evaluation. And in 75 uh, people who practiced yoga weekly for a period of three months, we found that they obtained about 15 to 20 percent reduction in their stress levels. Uh, even as small as about 40 minutes a day, once a week, and uh, that with constant training, they were able to obtain this benefit. So we have now uh, made this yoga uh, become available to masses for practicing it. And uh, as part of our academic activity, we are also uh, conducting a conference called as Yantra, uh, which is uh, the yoga and neuroscience with the traditional approaches of different nature, how to bring them all on common platform. I'm sure you can visit the website and those of you who may be interested, may also join and also motivate any other scientists to join this uh, conference which is going to be happening in the month of October. So I thank the Atashree and the group of uh, Rotary Club for letting me come over. And this is my email. Any questions are there, you want to email me. Any other feedback that you want to give, please go ahead and email on this address. So I thank you. I'm going to come out of this slide screen, back to the screen where I can see all of you. All the best. Thank you very much, sir. Many thanks indeed. Uh, may, may we have a few questions for you? Yeah. Um, Bharat? Yeah, Mr. Raja, so I'm going to uh, request people uh, to unmute themselves if they want to ask a question. Yes. Uh, otherwise, please leave your microphones muted because more than five or six microphones are on, it's too chaotic. You, you can now unmute yourselves if you need to ask a question. Yeah, if you need to ask a question, I, you unmute yourself. Yeah, um, excuse me, Rama, wanting to ask, say something. Yes, ma'am, yeah. go ahead. Okay, uh, this is regarding the old chanting that you said, mentioned, sir. I would like to add here, that we have seen, Atishrians have seen the benefit of it because we've been doing Om chanting every evening uh, about 21 times in a matter of say five and a half minutes. And um, every one of us could feel the change in our system. And it benefited a person who was in severe dementia. I mean, almost everyone started, comment maybe her medicines also, but everyone started commenting about how this patient was you know, becoming a little more aware. Then we had one severe cancer patient who felt that our chanting OM helped her 
forget her pain. And my own personal testing of my husband, who was a severe dementia patient, um, every time he became a little restless, violent, all that I would do was, you know, just start saying "Om" to him, and it did help him calm down quite a bit. Thank you, sir. Thank you, madam. <clears throat> so we in childhood learned "Chinta Chita Saman," and "Chinta" has to be removed from our minds. So that is very convincingly uh, told us how to pull out of depression with the help of yoga. Now, uh, my the question I ask you is. Besides pranayam, in pranayam I chant yoga also. Are there any particular asanas that you recommend uh, for depression, sir? Uh, although I may not go into all those micro details, the asanas and the yoga module that we apply for individuals who have depression is in public domain. It is available in our website uh, in a, some of the scientific articles which we have published. Also available in uh, public domain. Carry an appendix of what are the yoga asanas that we practice, and I'm sure you could visit our website at Nimans uh, Nimans Integrated Center for Yoga, which is uh, you hit Nimans and you get all these articles. And the details are available. All the modules of Is yoga that we get. Thank you, sir. Sorry for interrupting. Is there no any, is there any uh, time frame uh, for chanting yoga? Five minutes, ten minutes at a time. For 15 minutes, how, how much time do we like? We inhale and exhale Om. So, like the lady just said, they do 21 times in about five, five and a half minutes. So, yeah, they, they are different. Yeah, the, the entire chanting of Om, although there is no uh, one rule which applies to all schools, many people say that the inhalation should be shorter than the exhalation. Uh, usually in the frequency of 1 is to 2. Uh, when, uh, and you give more emphasis on that uh, last consonant mm, which will give you a sense of vibration experiences around your ears. And in fact, we have also a logic why this vibration experiences around the ear is relevant to the neurophysiology of home. I am not going to that part of it. But uh, inhalation should be shorter than the exhalation or the exhalation should be longer than the inhalation. I am making you emphasize on that mm component so that you get the feeling of vibration around your ears for which on which you have to focus. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Any others? Yes. Tell us. Yeah, so <clears throat> first of all, <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you for uh, this wonderful uh, informative session. And it was really uh, packed with the uh, wonderful data study. And so we have actually another dimension where we could say how yoga is useful. So my question to you is uh, uh, regarding the OM chanting. Do we have some data to back that if we start the OM chanting very early, uh, early age, has it some kind of uh, effect on the brain development? Theoretically, it should have. But if you ask me, are there any studies where people have looked at OM chanting done from young age uh, and those who are not done from young age at the age of 10 years or 12 years, are there any differences in their body, mind, brain, or whatever it is? Unfortunately, we have not done that research. But it's true that we take all uh, traditional texts and all our elders' words very seriously and we simply practice without questioning. And today, science wants us to question. So we have questioning. All right. Thank you, sir. A question. Any others? Yeah, can I ask a question? Sir. Uh, uh, I just want to know whether, how does yoga help in reducing memory loss? Can memory loss be quantified, measured, uh, and shown like what you showed in other cases? Does it have any impact? Yeah. Direct impact? Yeah. You are right, sir. The memory tests have been done before and after yoga. Practice for several months to weeks or years. People have done those tests. There are many data which is available. Uh, the memory functions get better 
particularly in the older group of people who don't have dementia though whether whether once the dementia sets in whether yoga works or not has not been very extensively studied but those who have had what we may call mm -hmm. mild cognitive impairment early memory loss which happens in many of us with age uh, this has a potential to be corrected or improved by practice of yoga there is research data to that effect and memory is measurable and uh, this is precisely although i did not show those slides the work that we have done uh, memory and cognition many of these data on which yoga actually produces improvements have been fairly extensively demonstrated yeah, my my question relates to mild cognitive impairment how does does that help or is it same thing like dementia it won't help yeah mild cognitive impairment is a fairly uh, amorphous and a large group of patients <clears throat> wherein a person experiences uh, subjective memory loss in good number of them a memory test could well be normal a proportion of the individuals who are experiencing uh, this uh, mild cognitive impairment have the risk of progressing into uh, dementia who amongst this group will progress into dementia is not very strongly elucidated there is no definitive answer to this but the fact remains mild cognitive impairment people will obtain improvements in memory following practice of yoga thank sir i have a question on the chanting of om yes. sir uh, uh some, some institutions say they say that om is to be pronounced as a u m o and as some say as om now uh, what uh, at, at the institute of naturopathy and yogic sciences in bangalore sir uh, what they teach is om uh, starting from nabhi nabhi yeah, hrit yeah. kantha rasana uh, right from the navel uh, like i mentioned to you uh, different traditions the different ways of practicing of om or any other yoga for that matter have been described we are only beginning to unravel differences between each of those practices I, we have only begun sir i must admit that i don't have answers to all different practices of yoga whether it works or whether it produces the same effect or not and so on and so forth uh, but the fact remains that whatever i have demonstrated works i'm not saying that others don't work others could well be happening i have to do more research and i must humbly admit that my research uh, question has had a very small uh, uh, spectrum of exposure so there is a patient in a very close friend of mine who was excellent yeah. until about 4 months back suddenly he has hit a streak of depression and uh, I, i was interested in your lecture today mainly for the purpose of you know approaching you uh, for his sake we are, i yes, live sir. in chennai we live in chennai and uh, 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 how do we approach uh, yeah, he can contact me sir he can send a mail i have given yes. him address i'll okay. be able to bring in some and help so that will be wonderful that will be wonderful we uh, uh, will make a beginning with that thank you very much sir thank you very thank much you, for your wonderful talk thank you very much sir okay uh, raja ji i think we should break it's been more than an hour since we have been logged oh yeah, yeah. just <laughs> one second sir manoj yes, sir. Can, I, yeah. can i can i ask one question manoj yeah you can go ahead okay. uh, you go ahead I... yeah with your uh, because i'd like just... to ask one question too yeah may i take one more question the last question i i have no problem but i thought i got that question a weekend uh, day is more precious to all of you <laughs> no no uh, it's been a pleasure it's been a pleasure to listen to you uh, what are the benefits of meditation can you enumerate except calming mind are there any other benefits of meditation what more do you want <laughs> no madam yeah yeah i i being a psychiatrist i can only talk about mind but uh, as uh, physicians people have demonstrated many other benefits of yoga starting from being flexible lesser incidences of falls that happen uh, in elderly people they suddenly fall for some unknown reasons yoga gets them better hyperactivity in children gets them better their uh, craving for 
drugs and alcohol, people have demonstrated that gets better. Their threshold to pain increases. They can tolerate pain better than what they used to happen in the past. And their uh, immune systems get better. Each of these have been demonstrated by different, different researchers in different parts of the world and different parts of the country, different laboratories. So I am, I, like I said, what you saw is only the tip of the iceberg, madam. There are a lot more research data that has emerged from yoga research world over. And what I may have used only the tip of the iceberg to illustrate one facet of yoga. Can I ask one question? Madam. Uh, I am Ranjini Kamath and mm -hmm. I am an Atashrian. And as my friend Rama just told you, we were practicing Om chanting. And this was a very beautiful session bringing us all together and afterwards having a little bit of chit chat. Now recently we have been told that Om chanting could also like, uh, uh, you know, disperse, uh, uh, you know, for COVID, it's better not to do Om chanting because this also could be dispersing, you know, these particles that, uh, so uh, what would your advice be? Because that Om chanting was a very beautiful period. Please where go we ahead all and do it. Get together. As long as you're doing it alone in a group, in yourself. In any case, if you are, Meeting in groups, you ought not to meet at all. Uh, there is a ban on group meetings. That's the reason why we have met, I have met all of you on this webinar. Otherwise, I would have been speaking to all the 50 of you oh, in a oh, hall. You yeah. have to be meeting That's in a hall. Oh. Either you chant home or you talk to each other or you whisper. Oh. You ought not to be meeting in halls. Oh. Yeah. At home, please go ahead and say home. So we were not meeting at home. We were meeting no, what out I'm saying and is you are maintaining a social distance also. Please continue to say home. Okay. Yeah, not, in not in a group. Gatherings. But not in a group. Isn't Even group home out can be more open? powerful? In the groups, you should not meet at all, madam. Oh, outside too? In the open air? Hey, please go ahead and do it. Please do it all by yourself in your puja room or your uh, right. room or in the terrace or whatever you want to do it. Right, right. Not for the time being. This. Yeah. Okay, thank so, you. Okay, Manoj. Now we'll get back to the rotary yes. protocols. So I would like to take this opportunity, uh, Dr. Gangadhar, to uh, sincerely thank you, express a sense of gratitude to you for an excellent talk. I would say uh, that is uh, neurobiology of yoga. I think that's something which was which was wonderful. I, I think you talked about uh, limbic deactivation related to Om chanting. That was new for me. I did know that Om chanting is good. But the connection related to limbic deactivation, the connection uh, to amyg amygdala, I mean, all these were only thought or maybe read things. And you gave a wonderful relevance along with the illustrations. I think that was really scientific and very, very convincing. So thank you so much for doing this for us. Your talk was indeed impeccable, I would say. The magnetic resonance spectroscopy and the role of GABA in yoga, I think these were the two points I noted down to further uh, dig in deep and I would want to write to you maybe sometime and learn more about this because these things are really helping us to understand more about it and that is something on behalf of Rotary we would like to spread amongst the community in addition to our physical community service. So once again, thank you so much on behalf of uh, Rotary Bangalore Whitefield Central, Atashri and Rotary Bangalore Kalyan. Club updates. Quickly.